What do you think, Governor Patterson, is the greater milestone, becoming New York's first black governor or being its first legally blind governor? Being the first disabled governor who is able to display their disability and not have to have political ramifications that are negative is a real milestone. At the same time, this country's history, particularly in terms of African Americans, brought here as chattel slaves, discriminated against for decades, if not a century, after the slavery that existed for 244 years, to have a governor probably has a greater impact on other African Americans because people now recognize that some of the bondage has broken and there are people from our community that could actually dream of becoming governor and now even president. How many speeches would you give on average as lieutenant governor? Well, I might speak in front of audiences daily, but not on subject matter that I didn't already know. Suddenly as governor, I would speak three, four times a day on subjects that I was just learning, and I'm still doing that. How challenging was that? Well, I don't read my speeches, and I can't keep notes. Therefore, it was extremely challenging. The focus of trying to memorize that amount of material in a short period of time is overwhelming. How do you do it? Well, memory is associative, and so um, you try to find little things that make you remember um, issues. So if you were talking um, about housing and you were talking about um, housing and uh, the subprime mortgage rate, I would try to picture um, houses that I had seen in my life that were kind of in ruin and or being in New Orleans after Katrina. And so this is the way I remember the housing issues. And then you try to line them up in an order that, that you can remember. So anything that's funny or a little absurd might help you remember something. You have been blind since you were an infant, correct? I have optic atrophy, which is scar tissue between the retina and the optic nerve. So I have only slight light perception in my left eye. I'm basically totally blind in my left eye. My right eye, I'm legally blind. My vision is 20 over 400, which is twice the level uh, that would make someone legally blind. And uh, so, uh, sitting across from you, I can see you, but I couldn't draw your picture. So only seeing out of one eye, I have problems with deaf perception. Mm -hmm. And I see colors, but I don't recognize people. And then, for some reason, they say, hi, who am I? <laughs> like I'm supposed to recognize their voice. They wouldn't say that to another public servant. And as equipped as many of us are, it is hard to remember thousands of voices. Of course. What do you see right now looking at me? Um, I see that you have a dark jacket on, uh, a light blouse, that you're, you have n notes on your lap, and, um, uh, and then you have light hair. And I'm fabulous looking? Fantastic looking. <laughs> People will be fascinating to hear how you actually get your day-to-day -day work done. And you have something called a bat phone. What is it and how does it work? This well, is it, right? Well, the, the bat phone is just a voicemail in, that I call and people read different articles that they think are important to me. So uh, I have uh, a number of, uh, you know, the bat crew. They call up there, they'll read the morning's articles People will see things in magazines they think are interesting, they'll record it for me. And uh, I think I have 13 saved messages and 21 new messages on the bad phone right now. But this voicemail system has everything from scheduling to speeches to... Uh, There's an article in Parade Magazine about the 20 uh, most evil dictators in the world right now. And uh, I just read that last night. It was pretty interesting. You read it, someone read it to you on the voicemail. Well, when I say I read it, I'm really listening to it. Um, sometimes the voicemail doesn't work. Sometimes the phone doesn't work. We were making a speech in Utica, New York yesterday, and we were in a zone where I couldn't call the, uh, the voicemail. Oh, that so, must have been frustrating. Right, and so my assistant has the notes and he 
read some of them to me and I, I tried to do it that way. But I think when you have a, a disability, and in my case, being legally blind, anything can go wrong at any moment. So it's your ability to use creativity, humor, distraction, anything while you're trying to accumulate the information. You do have an uncanny ability though, Governor, and don't be modest, please, to completely memorize things that you have listened to and give a speech so that no one would ever even know that you had neither read nor written that speech. At my inauguration, I had to introduce, introduce 28 people, and I introduced them in order, and then I recited about a 17-minute uh, speech exactly from the notes, and um, my assistant, who's been with me a long time, said to me, I couldn't believe you did that, and the only thing I could tell him is, they don't call me governor for nothing. <laughs> How do you do it, though, really? Well, they're, they're keys to memorization, and it's to try to put things in order that will make you um, remember it. And so uh, I try to think of the, of the numbers, one to ten, and I try to find an issue for each number, and then, um, and then I'll go to a different set of numbers. And it's, it's very difficult. It takes a lot of focus. But what I now am becoming more comfortable uh, is that if you don't remember things, um, it's not like you're on a high wire and once you've fallen, you're going to hit the ground. You're still speaking to an audience. They don't know that you've lost your place. So as long as you can be relevant and say things that are substantive and sensible, then people, I believe, will uh, think that you remembered it. I understand you're pretty good on the basketball court. Well, my brother and my father wanted me to, to uh, be athletic when I was a teenager. It's another issue that, that young people have is that they want to participate in, in activities. And so they taught me how to play basketball because it was the biggest ball they could find. And there was a reasonable chance when they threw it to me, I might catch it. <laughs> and so I guess I just used to practice over and over because I wanted people to know that I could play. Given your limitations vis-a-vis -vis your sight, how, how could you see the basket? Wasn't that hard? Uh, yeah, it's pretty hard. And uh, I would start every game by taking a long jump shot that I knew would miss. But now it induces the person guarding me to think that I might shoot it again. So then I would fake and try to go past them. And, you know, if you get close enough to the basket, you'll see it. So you could see the basket? I would shoot at the white net, which was more visible than the actual basket. So I knew to shoot over the net. And uh, sometimes it goes in. Do you still play? I still play, but um, as Howard Cosell once said to Muhammad Ali, I'm not the man I used to be.